what was all the worry about? Previously, before this, the sentiment was, well, we're going to downgrade a lot of the earnings uh, sentiment here. And judging by what we see so far, it looks relatively good. Is that the case? Well, I think so far it looks really good indeed. And I think what the, one of the most interesting points actually about these bank earnings is, is what it says about the broader U.S. economy. So as you delve further into it, one of the things that's, of course, very important are the charge-offs or the losses they take on their loans. And those seem to be very, very modest indeed. And I think even more surprising was at Wells Fargo, where you saw this actually came down now. They reduced their provisions for loan losses. And they've got a fairly risky kind of portfolio, people would have thought. A lot of commercial real estate there, big real estate exposure, and that seems to do very well. So I think we're tempted to look at this and say, well, the U.S. economy in general seems to be in, in very good shape and, and does not seem to be slowing down at anywhere near the pace that might have been expected. But is that same U.S. economy also the biggest risk then for the lenders themselves? That yes, it's still looking fairly good right now, but if it was to turn in any direction right now, that that could offer a fairly negative picture then for these lenders? C certainly, if we see the U.S. economy turn down, we're going to see a much, much higher rate of charge off on, on the lending portfolio. Unclear what that would mean for the sort of the market investment banking side of things and, and some of the commercial. Lending. But yes, we certainly see a, a, a big deterioration in terms of the profitability of those banks if that would happen. But it doesn't look like it's anywhere on the horizon. So we've been talking about a slowing economy now for I, as long as I can almost remember now uh, the, that things are going to, we're going to see a big uptick in, in write offs on portfolios on, in terms of credit portfolios and in particular on credit cards. Now, credit cards, we have seen some uptick in terms of how many people are not repaying their loans there, but it remains very, very low historically and very, very manageable, I think, for these large banks. Tavia, let me just bridge from this to net interest income because some of those metrics actually went up, which was extraordinary given we've had a rate cut, but it's the repricing of some loans that start to kick in. And much to the frustration of Jamie Dimon, there were a ton of questions as to where these margins are going because uh, for this year they gave guidance uh, more than expected, actually $92.5 billion. But for next year, big question mark. And, you know, they're holding back in terms of what that number is going to look like. What do you make of how significant NII will be from here? Well, it's an absolutely crucial factor for these banks in terms of the net interest margin. It's, it's We're sort of in, a, in an interest rate environment where it's hard to say, very hard to say where the Fed is going to go next. I think we're actually looking at this now and saying that the 50 basis point cut that we saw in September might have actually been premature. We don't see any signs on the horizon that the US economy needs that kind of boost. And certainly the markets don't, as you, as you well know, we're at record highs right now. It doesn't seem like the right point for the, the Fed to step in and say, yes, we need to support markets. We need to support the economy now with an interest rate cut. So I think we might look back at their, their 50 basis point cut and say that was premature. Uh, I think the odds that we get another small cut in November are still there, still on, on the books. After that, I think the Fed is going to sit on its hands for a while and say, well, we've jumped into this a bit more quickly. Inflation is not coming down as quickly as we expected. The economy is more robust than we thought. The banking sector is doing pretty well. All those things point towards the Fed not cutting rates anymore uh, in for, for the next few months after the November meeting. So we'll see how what they actually decide to do in that. But I think that would be where the balance of the risks is now, that we see no further interest rate cuts and the markets might not really like that and appreciate that that much. Tavio, we have had this deepening of the yield curve, though, which should help bank profitability. But to the point around what happens next, I've heard everything from, oh, we could still have a jumbo size rate cut down the track. We wouldn't rule it out uh, maybe for this year, but perhaps not next year as they play catch up. How unusual is this cycle? Because if you've got businesses and consumers wanting to take out loans and they can't judge where the Fed's going to be, doesn't that impact the process somewhat? Definitely. There's a, a lot of uncertainty at the moment around where interest rates are going. So I think that's unusual in a certain sense that I think a lot of the macroeconomic indicators point one direction. The Fed is saying something else that's causing a certain degree of confusion. And that is unusual. Usually, you know exactly what the Fed is thinking and what direction they're going to go. And bear in mind, they tend to, once they start to move in one direction, carry on moving in that direction for a year or one and a half years or maybe even two years. So once they start a cutting cycle, they will carry on that typically. And once they start a raising cycle, they will carry on doing that for a couple of years typically. Now in a situation we say, well, I'm not really sure what they're going to do next. It doesn't look like it was a terribly good idea to start to cut so soon.